Okay, today's lecture is going to be on wood finishing methods and materials. We have an, uh, an array of different products and different pieces that were finished with them. And we'll talk about each one in turn. Now, the problem with finishes is the, the market is almost endless. There are th literally thousands and thousands of different finishing products in a wide array of categories. And you, you, can, you can spray them, you can brush them, you can wipe them, you can rub them, you can polish them. There's uh, uh, no shortage of different methods of applying them. And then you have to add the confusing factor that almost all of them are available in water-based or oil-based. So it gets really confusing really quickly and we'll try in this lecture to to try to bring some of it into perspective so you can get a, a little bit better idea of what you're looking at and what you need to do. Uh, essentially there are two basic kinds of finishes. There's oil-based and water-based. Now in the oil-based um, you can get traditional products like varnish, lacquer, shellac, uh, tongue oil, Danish oil, uh, urethane, polyurethane, and a, a host of others. And in the water-based finishes, you can get acrylic, urethane, polyurethane, varnish, lacquer, and many others. And you notice that there's a lot of common names in both of them. You can get lacquer in water-based and oil-based. You can get varnish in both. Um, it just gets very confusing. Uh, in general, though, oil-based products, uh, they give the wood more pop than you would normally get with a water-based product. There's a a condition in a finish that's called catatoyance. It comes from a French word uh, that means tiger's eye. Uh, essentially, it, uh, it gives a much deeper, uh, more visually attractive finish than the water base does. Um, Now, there's a downside to everything. Now, the downside of oil-based finishes is they generally take longer to dry. And cleanup is a lot more difficult. You have to use some kind of solvent to clean uh, your, your brushes or your spray gun or whatever else you're using to apply it. So cleanup is more difficult and the drying times are generally longer. Now, water-based finishes have a reputation for being more eco-friendly. Uh, they're supposed to be better for the environment, and to a certain degree they are. Um, most water-based finishes, well, excuse me, all water-based finishes are um, water cleanup. The, uh, some of them, you need soap and water, um, but you can clean them up easier uh, the drying time on most water-based finishes is shorter than the corresponding oil base. Now there's a big uh, thing amongst furniture manufacturers these days. They want you to believe that they're using uh, eco-friendly water-based finishes on their furniture. Now the problem with water-based finishes is when you apply them, they tend to raise the grain of wood uh, where the oil base does not. So after you've spent a lot of time sanding uh, your piece and then you put a water-based finish on it, the grain raises and it's now rough again. So you have to sand between coats until 
the surface of the wood is sealed so that the water-based finish can't get to it to raise the grain even further. So what these furniture companies that claim that they use water-based finishes, what they don't tell you is they put an oil-based sanding sealer on it first. So it wouldn't raise the grain and then they'll put a water-based finish on top of the oil-based sanding sealer. Um, so it's, there's not a lot of honesty in that, but there's not a lot of honesty in a lot of things. Um, now, the choice that you make between oil and water is entirely up to you. Uh, each has pros and cons. Uh, there's a, a good side to oil. There's a good side to water. There's a not so good side to oil. There's a not so good side to water. So. It's going to be up to you whichever way you want to go, but there's no shortage of products in either one of those categories. Now, when it comes to how you're going to actually apply whatever finish you choose, uh, you can choose uh, spray, uh, brush, uh, pad, wipe, uh, hand rub, and there's even more than that. So once you decide and work your way through the oil or water uh, dilemma, now you got to decide how am I going to actually apply it. So the the spray finishes. Now, if you're going to spray, um, there's a couple of different options. You can use the rattle can. They call them rattle cans because when you shake them, they rattle. There's a marble on the inside that helps mix the ingredients before you spray it. Uh, there's no shortage of uh, spray can finishes that you can put on wood. Uh, the advantage of them is they don't require any additional equipment. You can spray it straight from the can. Uh, the downside of these is they're generally thinner, so they tend to run more than traditional spray finishes that are applied with spray guns. So, uh, but for a small project, uh, they're not bad. I use it uh, on some things. Um, most of my spraying is done with a spray gun. Now, I use uh, an automotive, uh, it's called a touch-up gun. It has a fairly small reservoir, but it sprays a very fine mist. Uh, it's a very good applicator for uh, lacquer. Now, I buy lacquer by the gallon, and I spray it through this gun. Um, I can get... Uh, I control the viscosity. Uh, lacquer in a can like this comes uh, too thick to spray. So it's understood when you buy a gallon of lacquer that you're going to dilute it with lacquer thinner, usually uh, up to 50-50. So if I buy a, a gallon of lacquer for $30 and a can of uh, a gallon of lacquer thinner for about 20, uh, I can wind up with two gallons of sprayable lacquer. Um, so it's a little cheaper when you dilute it. Um, now, when it comes to the actual finish that you get with the sprays, uh, this is an example of one of the, uh, the things that I've finished uh, with the lacquer. It was sprayed with this gun and it's been polished to a gloss finish. Um, and that's another thing we can talk about uh, in a little bit. But that's essentially what a, a lacquer finish would look like. Um, and that would cover pretty much the spray. Now, the brush-on finishes, we don't do very much in uh, lathe work. Uh, you'll see more brush work done in flat work. 
but the, the products that you can spray, or rather brush on, would be uh, the urethanes, the polyurethanes, the shellacs, the, the lacquers, excuse me, the, um, the varnishes. Uh, those are products that you can uh, apply with a brush because they generally don't dry as fast so the finish has a chance to what they call self-level. Uh, when you put something on with a brush you leave brush strokes and because you've got so long for it to dry uh, gravity tends to level out the brush marks so it's called self-leveling. Um, uh, there's certain products that you simply can't put on with a brush. You would never attempt to brush lacquer because lacquer dries very quickly. Uh, a coat of lacquer can dry in as little as 15 minutes. Um, and if you put that on with a brush, the brush strokes simply do not have enough time to level out. So you would be left with a very ripply finish on, um, on your piece. So brushing generally is not something that you do with wood turning projects. Now there's other products that you put on with a pad. Uh, you'll take uh, a cheesecloth and then you will pour some of the product into the cheesecloth and then you apply it with the cheesecloth. Uh, the most common one done that way is called French polish. Uh, it's a very intricate, very involved, uh, very difficult finish to apply. But you find French polish on very expensive furniture. Um, if you know, the piece of furniture you're looking at an end table that costs fifteen thousand uh, dollars, you can pretty much bet that that has French polish on it. Um, it's a a process where they pad on multiple coats of the lacquer and uh, then they they sand it with very fine grit to level it and then they polish it. Uh, but it's a very involved, very time consuming finish and it really is not done much outside of professionals. Um, there's wipe-on finishes. Uh, the most common is called wipe-on poly. Now wipe-on poly uh, again is available in water-based and oil-based um, but this you just apply uh, with a rag. You wipe it on, you let it soak in a little bit and then you wipe the excess off, wait for it to dry and you put an additional coat. Um, all finishing products tend to be either surface application or absorption products. Uh, the lacquer tends to just simply build up on the surface. It doesn't penetrate that deeply. The wipe on poly is different. It will actually penetrate into the wood to a certain degree. So after you put multiple coats it will uh, cease to soak in to the wood and then it will begin to build up on the surface and then you get a surface film on it. Um, and that would be the wipe on poly and this is a piece that was finished with the wipe on poly. This one would not have sprayed well because of all of the openings and all of the wrinkles that are in it. So this one was coated with the wipe on and you just wipe it on, let it set a little bit and then you wipe the excess off. So there wouldn't be a place where it would build up the way it would if you tried to spray this on. Now another penetration product is called butcher block conditioner or uh, just butcher block finish. It uh, is purely a penetrating finish. You would put that on, ah, surprise, butcher blocks um, or any, a lot of kitchen utensils you finish with the butcher block. And you wipe it on and let it set and it will penetrate and then you wipe off the excess. And one coat is sufficient. Uh, it's something that you might want to uh, reapply 
uh, every six months or a year depending on how much it's used. So that would be a product that's strictly uh, penetrating. Um, then there's another category of uh, product that's called a, uh, a hand rub. This is uh, a, a product that's designed specifically for gun stocks. Uh, and this puts an incredible finish on a gun stock, but it takes a very long time to actually apply this finish. It takes many, many, many coats, 20 to 30 coats of this. And you take a small drop of it and you put it on and you hand rub it until it completely covers the entire piece. You let it dry, you cut it with steel wool and you apply a second coat and a third one and a fourth one. And you keep going until you have a finish that is absolutely incredible. Uh, back in the day when they actually made wooden gun stocks, 99% of them today seem to be molded plastic. But that would be the hand rub finish. And we're not quite finished. There's a number of other finishes that you can apply. Um, there's those that are uh, they're heat activated. This is what uh, would be called uh, a friction finish. Uh, this is generally applied on the lathe um, and after you've turned it and sanded it while it's still on the lathe, you apply a small amount of this and you hold a rag against it and it builds up uh, heat from the friction and the heat from the friction will set the finish uh, and you get a, a very good finish. It's used a great deal on pins. Um, it doesn't work well on larger pieces but pins and small lidded boxes, this works just fine. Um, then the, uh, the list continues. Um, there's a new kind of finish that's out that is a, a CA finish. Um, this essentially is super glue, but it's been specifically formulated to finish wood. And again, it's used primarily on pins. This pin was finished with the, uh, the CA. Uh, it puts a very durable, a very hard finish on a pin, which uh, makes it durable. Uh, you want something that's not going to wear off or chip off quickly. And the CA fits the bill for that. Um, there's a lot of things that you can finish with that you really wouldn't think that much of. Uh, this is a block of beeswax. Um, it's exactly what the name implies. This was started out as a honeycomb in a beehive. Uh, it was collected, drained of the honey, and they just used the, the wax itself to apply the finish. Uh, you can rub it directly on a piece uh, and put a rag to it and again the friction from the rag will melt the wax and evenly distribute it on the piece. Uh, this lidded box was finished with beeswax. So um, it has its place. Uh, I use beeswax a lot on the inside of lidded boxes and then I'll finish the outside with a different product. Um, then you can get into the actual buffing systems. Uh, there is a system uh, made by a Beal tool company. Uh, it uses three separate wheels with three separate compounds. Uh, each wheel is a different um, material. This one is uh, all uh, cotton uh, uh, heavier 
uh, layers of, uh, of a cotton fabric and it's more abrasive and you put um, uh, this particular compound is called triple E and that's what you would put on the first wheel. The second wheel is uh, it alternates. It has one of the heavier, uh, coarser fabric, and in every other one is the softer uh, fabric that you find on the wax. So this one is a combination of the two, and you put an intermediate grit on it, and this is called white diamond. And you, you buff it first with the triple E, then you buff it with the white diamond, and then you take a block of pure carnauba wax and you put that on the third wheel and then after you have uh, buffed it with the two buffing compounds then you apply the wax and you get a finish like this. These were lidded boxes that were finished with the buffing system. Uh, I like this system. I use it a lot on smaller items. Um, and as you can see, there's no shortage of options for finishing. You, you could, and this really just touches the surface. Uh, if I put every product out here that's available, even just one of every type, uh, uh, they wouldn't be room in this garage to put them. So this is just kind of scratching the surface. It'll give you a little bit of a head start on the subject of finishing. Um, you will do like everybody else. You will eventually find a system that works well for you, for the way that you turn and the way that you want to finish. Um, a lot of times it's driven by uh, your own uh, personality. Uh, impatient people are not going to put 30 coats of this on a piece. Now I have, I've made a number of pieces with this finish, but it requires a huge commitment in time. And if you don't have the patience for it, it's not something you're going to consider. Um, now the quick down and dirty stuff like the friction polish or the CA, that's what appeals to the impatient turner. Um, I prefer the lacquer because it only takes 15 minutes for it to dry. I can recoat in 15 minutes. The wipe on poly puts a nice finish, but this takes about six hours between coats. So and you need uh, five or six coats. So that's not something you can do in a day where the lacquer finish, I can put four or five coats of lacquer in just a couple of hours. I can put four or five coats in the time it takes to put one of the wipe on poly. The downside is I need the spray gun to be able to do it. Um, so. Uh, for a lot of people, the rattle cans are a good alternative. So it all is going to come down to personal choice. You will find something that you like that works for you, for the way that you turn and your own personal uh, personality. Um, I hope the lecture's been helpful. We will just conclude the lecture with that. And uh, I wish you luck in your endeavors to finish your products well.